Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? I didn't have a chance to make a video yesterday, so I decided to make this quick one today. As you know, the market is down today because we got some hot inflation numbers coming in off of the, uh, the PCE, personal consumption expenditures. This supposedly is one of the favorite uh, indicators of the Fed. I, I don't know, I don't really pay a lot of attention, but what you see here today is the obvious, very obvious monetarist zombie reaction, and that is what is causing the selling. What's interesting, by the way, is that if you look at uh, Fed fund futures, still pricing in a 25 basis point rate hike in uh, the March meeting and then another 25 basis point rate hike in the May meeting, which would bring rates at five and a quarter to five and a half. Now look, I understand that rate increases discount the value of financial assets. I mean, I've been talking about that since day one. But I also have explained to you guys that the impact of each successive rate hike, especially when we're going now down to 25 basis points, we were doing, you know, they were doing 75 basis points like over and over and over. And we went from zero Right, we went from zero uh, to 50 and then 50 to 100. Those increases were 100%. So each successive rate hike now, especially when we're talking about something like 25, uh, 25 basis points, the, the impact of that percentage wise is a lot smaller than the impact that came from the initial rate hikes that came off of a zero rate, okay? So like there's diminishing returns, but at the same time, as I've explained in the past, the opposite is true with regard to the fiscal impact, all right? Now let's look at some, first of all, I told you that right now, as of right now, uh, the, the rate increases have already uh, resulted in a $200 billion additional interest income flow into the economy, all right? Um, personal interest income is now rising at the fastest rate in eight years, and it's just beginning. If you look at the fact that there's 25 trillion in, you know, debt, it's not debt, but government securities held by the public, a five and a half percent interest rate would mean like almost a 1.4 trillion annual stimulus. That's like, it's the same thing as saying 1.4 trillion of checks being sent out to people. Now, again, it, it's, Unfortunately, maybe not, not going to the right class of people. It's going to people who already have money. But, you know, that that all gets added into the swimming pool, right? Remember yesterday or the other day I said, look, if you really want to keep it simple, remember the old saying like to keep it simple, stupid. Think of the swimming pool. I'm the, I'm the guy who came up with this, uh, this metaphor. And I think a lot of you have really grasped onto that. And I, I think, um, you know, you could see things now in a more clear fashion based on what is the big picture? Is the pool getting filled up? If it is getting filled up, at what rate is it getting filled up? And vice versa, is the pool getting drained? And if it's getting drained, at what rate is it getting drained? Now. Um, we know that in March and April, I've been telling you guys this. First of all, I also told you that February 15th was the peak in the fiscal flows. I don't know why every time I make these videos, I get an itch in my nose. 
Uh, February 15th was the peak in the fiscal flow, so I already anticipated and told you that we would get into a kind of a corrective period in the market from that point. I also said that March and April were tax drains, and um, you know that that tends to be destabilizing to the market, and you obviously you you should be able to to understand that because if your financial balances get drained, you know, because you're sending it to the government and your checking account goes down or your savings go down, well, there's just less there in terms of balances to support the economy and to support the stock market. But those things are temporary because the government runs deficits so you know, we, we tend to, they tends to get put back into the system. It takes time. I mean, we've seen this. Sometimes it takes six weeks. Sometimes it could even take longer. But I don't look at these things as a kind of a permanently debilitating situation. I look at these things as, yeah, I mean, they happen on a quarterly basis. We got to deal with that. Uh, you know, we kind of forgot about that during the pandemic because the stimulus was so large that it offset the destabilizing impact of these tax trains. But here's something I got to tell you, and it goes back to uh, a thing I mentioned just a, a second ago, was the fact that interest income flows now with these rate hikes, this is what the, the monetarist zombies, they don't seem to understand. And they're not going to understand this because, again, it's their orthodoxy. It's the way they view things. It, it's a single variable um, analytical framework that is even that single variable to them is poorly understood. But these transfers are just going to continue to go up. I mean, this is like... I'm looking at these numbers and I'm like, holy shit, like, like, this is amazing. Like, these are, these are massive, like, Congress would never approve this if it was like an appropriation for, you know, a new, new spending programs. But this is all just going out automatically. And that does not even include, by the way, let me add, that does not even include what the Fed is paying to the banks on interest on reserves that that's like another what we got six trillion in reserves of five percent it's you're talking about massive amounts was like three uh uh five percent so six trillion in reserves 1.5 trillion am i doing that right Six percent. I'm sorry, three hundred billion. Is that right? Five percent. Whatever. My math is fucked up. Three hundred billion annually, which accrues to. Yeah, that's it. Three hundred billion, which would accrue to bank. You know, uh, capital. And bank capital is the only constraint to lending. So you have a situation where the banks are just getting flush with cash, Fed handing them money, ability to lend. So all of these things are being uh, ignored by the monetarist crowd who are just focusing on their single variable rate hikes. And it's funny because even with all the rate hikes that we've seen so far, which has been eight rate hikes and another one coming next month, the economy keeps expanding. And it's interesting because they keep having to change their narrative. They keep having to change their rationalization. Like it started out as, oh, we're gonna get a hard landing, right? Then we're gonna get a, maybe we're lucky we're gonna get a soft landing. Then they change it to, we're going to get no landing. They're just going to keep raising rates and the economy is going to keep expanding. And then that was a really, really uh, a frustrating and annoying classification that they had to come up with. And then it looks like maybe we're, we're back to, 
a hard landing. Like every day, they have to change their characterization of what's going on. This is not science. I'm sorry. This is pure emotion. This is like, this is like some very, very emotional person who's changing their mind every single day. Based off of, again, just pure emotion, not, nothing scientific, nothing, you know, uh, that has been deeply, deeply analyzed and understood. So here's my problem. Like I see the market down today, four or 500 points on this, and I'm like, I'm fully invested. I, I don't have really any spare available cash. If I did, I mean, wild horses couldn't hold me back from buying into the market today. There's so many bargains I see. And I'm saying that even as I know that we're coming into this tax train period in um, March and April. I may be jumping the gun a little bit, but I, I can't help it. Like if I see, look, if you have some favorite thing, some favorite item, a car, a Ferrari, a, I don't know, a, a, a Birkin bag, if you're a woman, something, and you see it on huge discount, like you want to buy it because you know the value that. All right, I see the same thing. The other day in my video, I talked about uh, impermanence and the way, you know, suffering is comes from attaching uh, attachments. I mean, suffering comes from attachments, and, and and one way you can rationalize or understand um, your suffering when the market goes down, if that's in fact what you're, the, the feeling you're going through, if that's the emotional feeling you're going through, is because you attach a permanence to it. There's an attachment to it. And everything is impermanent. That's just the nature of the universe. It's the nature of, of life. Our lives, our very lives are impermanent, okay? The way to look at it is... It's not going to stay in this state. And while it is in this state, the way to look at it is that it is an opportunity. I said to you the other day that, you know, prior to the last couple of days, my portfolio hit an all-time record high. My personal stock portfolio hit an all-time record high. Now it's pulled back, obviously, from the past couple of days. But, you know, if I had more money to dump in here right now, how do you think it went to an all-time record high? Because I was employing that strategy through the whole last year when it was going down. So I built up some major, major, really great positions in some really good stocks. That's what you got to do. So... I wanted to do this update because I didn't have a chance to do it yesterday. I, I want everybody to understand that um, it, it's all how you see things. That's number one. Number two, on a more, I guess, um, investment focus level or, or economics focus level, you have to really, really take to heart what I'm saying about how the monetarist view, by the way, here's something else very interesting about the monetarist view, because all throughout the period when we were in COVID and the, uh, uh, you know, fiscal expansion was really, really going through the roof. And we saw this hyper spike in money supply and all the monetarist zombies were saying, Look at the money supply. The money supply is going to cause inflation. The money supply is going to cause inflation, right? This is the classic monetarism that was that was invented by Milton Friedman, who, by the way, at the end of his life, didn't even believe in many of the things that he came up with. But now when we have uh, M2, which is their favorite indicator, I don't even look at that anymore. I just think it's silly. 
Uh, but when they look at M2, which is now contracting at the fastest rate ever, a record pace of contraction in M2, don't you think these same people will be saying, we're going to go into massive deflation? No, they're saying the same thing. Like, if the Fed's got to raise rates, they got to raise rates. I've done many videos in the past where I have pointed out uh, hypocrisy in, in logic, in, in the way of thinking. And my view is, and you may disagree with me, but my view is you, you have to go against that hypocrisy because it's, it's a clear expression of a lack of understanding. And it is also a clear expression of emotional attachment. And attachment, this is a Buddhist concept, attachment is the cause of all suffering. Okay? Anyway, that's it for now, folks. Enjoy your day. Namaste.